How many of you know that the reason why it's free is such a great price was paid? Amen. You may be seated. Pastor, I listen to you. Don't look so surprised. But I listen to you. You gave, uh, I don't know how many people caught this, but... Uh, you mentioned about carrying your Bible and having your Bible, just not just having a Bible as an app. It's okay, but there's nothing that's going to replace having a Bible on your lap. The written word uh, is a powerful thing. And uh, so I heard you. So probably the first time in quite some time I've, I bring my Bible with me tonight, and uh, 
just wanted to say that. I want to say a few things. I told you that I have been reading and dedicated this summer to the Gospels. And I'm reading now the Gospel of Luke. I didn't do it through any specific order. I read John and then Mark, and now I'm reading Luke. And I read again the story that I shared a little bit with you guys last week, again, about the woman with the hemorrhage and the issue of blood. And uh, I read Luke's take on the story. And it's pretty powerful, and I don't want to take a whole lot of time, and I'm not here to preach. I just... You know, I share thoughts with you. But in those verses, Luke mentions, uh, and, and that portion of Scripture mentions how Jesus was touched that day. And the first one, he said that the crowd was crowding him. Okay? You know how it feels like to be in a crowd? Do you know that you could feel all alone in a crowd? You know that, right? Now, I don't know if it's so much a part of life down here, but I grew up in New York, and I used to deliver newspapers in downtown Manhattan, and the, the biggest chore was avoiding all the people on the streets, and when I had to go in an elevator, it was like a really a can of sardines. You, you can't social distance an elevator really and so I know about crowding but that Greek word there pastor it's interesting it's suneko which means to hold against that's this see I'm holding this paper against me this is what crowding is but the moment I release pressure what happens Right? So it's only there because it's being pressed. And the people were pressing against him. Um, so they were crowding and they were pressing. The Greek word for pressing is apothelibo, which means to be pressed on all sides. It even gives the connotation of being squeezed. Okay? Uh, being pressed hard. And um, so then the last is the word touched. This is the word that the woman with the issue used. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. Jesus cried out and said, who touched me? And then later on she confesses that she had touched him. Now, this is the beautiful thing about the Greek, because every one of those forms of touching has a different definition. And the Greek is hapto, for the word touch, which means fashioned to, or to adhere, or to fashion with fire to a thing. So the word there means the woman's faith attached her to Jesus. The idea of welding, of being melted together. Have you ever had something welded? The two become what? One. So now I understand why the people who were pressing against him didn't receive anything. And I really understand the people who were just trying to squeeze as close as they could to Jesus didn't get anything. But faith allowed this woman to be a part of him. And that's why, listen to me, power went from him into her. Because they were connected. That is the power of faith. What's amazing to me is because I told you last week, she was a woman of unclean things. And everything that she touched became unclean. And she had to, the Bible said she had to come from behind. But this is what she said, Pastor. This was the, the amazing thing about when she touched him. She said, if I could just touch 
the fringe or the hem of his garment. I'll be made whole. She wasn't, I think maybe she was a little afraid to touch him because everything she touched became unclean. But somehow when you have faith in Christ, the unclean and the cleaner of all things makes a way and changes life. So what I want to say here today is don't just crowd around him. Just don't press up against him. But for heaven's sake, adhere yourself to him. Amen. Touch him to where the two are one. And that's how we do it, with faith. Simple, simple faith. I join myself to Jesus. Do you receive that word? I'm going to give you another good word. Here is a pledge card. We have them in the back. We're marching forward to financial freedom. We want to. We don't burn a lot of things here, but we would like to burn the mortgage. Amen. Holy fire. You know why I'm excited about that? Because a promise came through the leadership of this church that if we do this, then many of us who believe with faith will adhere ourselves to the same blessing. And our financial situation will change forever. This is a promise given by the Holy Spirit to our leadership. Simple obedience. There are different weekly pledges that you could give. There are one-time amounts. Take a card home, and you say, hey, man, I'm so broke I can't even pay attention. I could understand that. But take a card home, and with faith, go before the Holy Spirit and say, Lord, what could you do through me? And he'll bless you. But don't eat your seed. Please. Don't eat the seed that God gives you. Amen. Will you stand up with me as we go before the Lord in this time of offering and worship? Do you know that offering is a part of worship? You know, it's great to receive your offering, and it's great that we, we receive your tithes. But God wants your heart. It's funny because he talked more about money than he did about hell. Because he knew that money was a big issue in people's lives. And he came to set us free. He who the Son sets free is what? That means financially free as well. You have to believe that. Let's go before the Lord and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this wonderful time. I thank you, Father, for being with my wife's family, dear Lord, as we face this issue. And as her mother has gone home, dear Father. I thank you for all the brothers and sisters who have rallied to my wife's side and have sent her love and encouragement. I pray for the Alvarado family, dear God, that you would minister to them. I thank you for this church because it is a fountain where I drink from on a daily basis and on a weekly basis. I thank you for the promises, dear Father, that you give through our leadership. And I pray for the word that goes out tonight, dear Lord, that it may bless every life on this campus, dear Father. We thank you and we're honored to be a part of this ministry and to support it with our temporal means and with our efforts. I thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come bring your tithes, offerings, and fellowship as much as social distancing will allow.
Smile. 
battle. How many of you believe he's never lost a battle? How many believe he's never lost a battle? Let me ask you this. How many of you believe he never will? Come on, give him a praise if you believe he never will lose a battle. Hallelujah. Never lost. Never lost a battle. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, turn to somebody and tell them, I sure am glad you're here tonight. Come on, welcome somebody, greet somebody. Glad you're here. Excited about what God is doing, how he's blessing. Um, if you need an outline, if you hold your hand up, we'll get you an outline. Anybody didn't get one that came in? Everybody's got a couple back there. Thank you, David. Not this Sunday, but next Sunday, wow, and heroes will be cranking back up with classes and food. 13th, I'm sorry. Two weeks. Anyway, it won't be next week. Yeah, that's right. Labor Day, we, we put it off a week for Labor Day, so I'm getting ahead of myself. But it'll be happening. Um, I... I For the last couple of weeks, especially when I get down to pray, this word just kept coming to my spirit and my mind, breakthrough. You don't hear a lot, this, the word breakthrough or talk about breakthrough used a lot in the secular. It's really more of a spiritual term and a breakthrough I'll be honest, in, in past times, I hadn't really thought a lot about it. But just like recently, I don't know, God's just been putting in my spirit breakthrough. We need a breakthrough. You know, we, we, the church needs a breakthrough. We as Christians, we, there are things going on in our life. This, have, you, have you just ever been to a place where you felt like you were just coming up against a brick wall and you couldn't get through you couldn't get past this place. You couldn't get past this, whatever it is. And so I, I really feel like God is telling us he's wanting to give us a breakthrough. And I really feel like September is going to be, I think breakthrough is going to be the word for September. It's going to be a major breakthrough in some areas in our home, in our life. A financial breakthrough, a physical breakthrough, a breakthrough in your family, a breakthrough in your lost loved ones, a breakthrough if we'll do it. So I, I want to just talk about the place of the breakthrough because the place is very important as well as the time. So let's look at Second Chronicles chapter 14 and verse 8. Second, I'm sorry, First Chronicles 14 and 8. First Chronicles 14 and 8. Thank you. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over all of Israel... All the Philistines went up in search of David, and David heard of it, and he went out against them. Now the Philistines had come and made a raid on the valley of Rephim. David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines, and will you give me, or give them into my hand? Then the Lord, then the Lord said to him, Go up, for I will give them into your hand. So they came up to Bel Perizim with and David defeated them there and David said God has broken through my enemies by my hand like the breakthrough of waters therefore they named that place Bel Perizim they abandoned their gods there so David gave order that they burned them with fire or they were burned with fire I love the Old Testament because what God does in the Old Testament is use actual situations, physical situations, to show us spiritual truths. And so we can read of the conflicts and the, 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 the conquests and the battles of the Old Testament and see so much of what's going on in the spiritual realm right now. 
the battles that are taking place in the spiritual realm right now. And so this is one that we read about uh, in the spiritual world. Some, some of us have been wondering why we're going through some of the things we're going through. Why, why is this happening in my life now? Why is this going on now? Why am I coming up against this situation or this place in my, my life now? And you've been wondering about what's going on. It's right here in 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 1 Chronicles 14 and 8. When the Philistines heard David had been anointed king over all Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David. Can I tell you why some of the things that have been coming against you have been coming against you? Because the devil heard you were stepping into your anointing. Can I tell you why? It seemed like all of hell has put a target on your back and and, and are camped outside your front door. It's because the devil has heard that you're about to be blessed. He's heard you're about to step into the hand of God on your life. He's seen that God is moving in your life. And so when he heard that God's will is happening in your life, he's come looking for you. I ain't scared. Look at somebody and tell him, I ain't scared. Come on, you're in the south. I ain't scared. Give me one of them stickers for my car. I ain't scared. Come on. As a matter of fact, David wasn't scared either. Look what he said. When David heard they came looking for him, he rolled up his sleeves and took the battle to them. The problem was he took it upon himself to take the battle to him, to them, and it wound up backfiring on him at first. The devil is out to intimidate and discourage us any way he can. He's out on a message, a method of intimidation. Uh, he's not wasting time on anyone that is not a threat to him. While David was sitting out in the field with the sheep playing his harp and not really doing anything, the Philistines weren't looking for him. They weren't looking for him when he wasn't doing anything. But the minute he became the giant killer, and the minute he became the Philistine slayer, and the minute he became anointed as king, the enemy, the, the devil's not looking for people that aren't giving him any problems. As a matter of fact, if, if, he's not, if the devil's not bothering you, you might need to take it up a notch. And so when the minute that he stepped into his anointing, They started coming after him. And and then, here's what you have to understand. It wasn't just the Philistines that started after uh, after David. Even King Saul, who David served, got jealous and intimidated and began trying to kill him and trying to hunt him down. Can I tell you something? When you start moving in the will of God on your life, you're going to have brothers and sisters who sit on a pew with you come against you. You're going to have people that will hug your neck and tell you they love you that will come against you once you step into the place of God in your life. Don't be surprised and don't be intimidated and don't back down, back off or back away. You go ahead and move in what God's called you to do. Amen? I love Exodus 1 and 11. So they appointed taskmasters over them to afflict them. This is Pharaoh over the children of Israel. In Egypt, they appointed taskmasters over them to afflict them with hard labor, and they built for Pharaoh strong cities, Pathium and Ramesses, Exodus 1 and 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied, the more they spread out, and so that they were in dread of the sons of Israel. The more the enemy afflicts a child of God, the stronger they get. You don't build up strength sitting on the couch drinking Diet Coke and eating donuts. I tried it. You build up strength when you go and you have resistance. And a child of God doesn't get strong until they have some resistance. Until they have some uh, uh, offense uh, uh, coming against them. They have uh, uh, opponents coming against them. So David fought and he won the battle at, P- at Bel Perazim. Bel Perizim is very important. Here's why. The word Bel means the place. I'll do a little Hebrew. You did some Greek. Bel means place. And Perizim is Peretz in the Hebrew means the breaking or the breach to break forth or the gap. So literally where David got victory is at the place of the breakthrough. The place of the breakthrough. 
I want to get to my place of breakthrough. I want to keep walking with God and following God and listening to God till I come into my place of breakthrough. Because can I tell you something? A battle that you may have lost somewhere else, when you get to the place of breakthrough, you're not going to lose the battle there anymore. Maybe we did like David and jumped the gun and got out of his will. So now it's time to go to the place of breakthrough. Let's look at this. Number one, David prayed. David prayed. First Chronicles 14 and 8. When the Philistines heard that David had been anointed king over Israel, all the Philistines went up in search of David, and David heard of it and went out against them. Now the Philistines had come, uh, had come and made a raid on the valley of Rephaim, and David inquired of God, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Now he's got smart. He went up there and toted a whooping. And when he went up there and what he did, he went after them. And so they just came up behind him and ransacked this other city. And he said, well, that didn't work. So he got smart. He said, you know what? I'm going to do it right this time. God, should I go up against them and fight? And God said, now. See, sometimes we forget how much we need God. Come on, pastor, teach it. Sometimes we'll get to clicking along and we think we got this thing and we got it figured out and we know how to do it. And so what has to happen, we have to fall on our face and remember without God. So David takes off, what, what, you want me? You want some of this? You want a piece of me? And they got a piece. And they send him back home with his tail between his legs. And so then he said, you know what, maybe I better make this a matter of prayer first. Maybe before, sometime before we say anything, we need to make it a matter of prayer. Maybe sometime before we jump up and act, oh, come on, Pastor, you're teaching now. He heard they were hunting him, so he just brought it to them. I'll take it to them. He forgot he needed God. So look, when David, number B, when David just reacted to their attacks, they brought it back to him. Now the Philistines had come and made a raid on the valley of Rephaim. Our emotions will get us into trouble. You you cannot win when you go by your emotions. And we know that David had some issues about emotions. David was a great songwriter and a great musician because he was so emotional. You know, you, you, you get these singers that just have whatever, they can, they can connect emotionally, killing me softly with his song, strumming my pain with his fingers, you know. And that was David. He was emotional, so he was a good musician. And a very, but, but, but the problem was you can't, you can't live by your emotions. And when he jumped up and just responded with his emotions, he got a whooping. I love the one story in uh, 2 Samuel 26, or 25 and 22. This is a good example of how emotional David was. So, and uh, what did I say it was? Is this in, it's in 1 Samuel. I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 25 and 22. Uh, David sent his men. He was kind of like a, Pastor Mel, he was kind of like an early mafia dude. And he would send his men out around the land and they would give protection. We'll protect you from the marauders, and we'll protect you from the pirates, and we'll protect you from all these people. And in turn, you just got to kind of give us a little tribute, you know. It's just like the mafia. And so he sent them down to Nabal's house, and they went down to Nabal's house and protected Nabal and his family. And so then when they come around, say, so, you know, we've been protecting you and your sheep and all your herds. We're a little bit hungry. How about something to eat? And Nabal said, I didn't ask you to help me. I didn't ask you to do nothing for me. You, you work for David. You go back to David. I'm not, your, I'm not your daddy. So they go back and tell David what happened. And David gets emotional. And David said, every man with a sword, follow me. Come on, we're going to go to Nabal's house. Well, let me read you in, in, in 1 Samuel 25 and 22. May God punish me and do so severely if I let any of his men survive until morning. Because he didn't feed his servants, he was emotional. How many of you know sometimes we get emotional, we get in trouble? As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in James 1 and 19, This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, for the anger of man does not achieve the righteousness of God. 
So David jumped up and tried to make something happen out of his emotions. He took, took a whipping because he wasn't at the place of breakthrough till he prayed about it. You cannot get to the place of breakthrough being emotional. You cannot get to the place of breakthrough trying to do it on your own until you learn to hit your knees, hit your prayer calls, or hit your altar, whatever it is, wherever you pray. You've got to get out and pray if you intend to get to the place of breakthrough. And stop trying to break it through, kick the door down on your own. You're going to break a knee. You're going to hurt yourself. So number two, so God told David, pursue. Somebody say pursue. God told David to pursue. I get amazed at people who just sit around and wait for God to drop it in their lap. You know, come on. God is not going to send that boss man down into mama's basement and tell you you got a job. Turn off the video game. I've got to talk to you a minute. <laughs> well, I heard one guy say his son was in the, in the Army or Special Forces for like six years. He came home and said, Mom, Dad, I'm going to stay with you guys until I get acclimated and get a job and go to work. And they said, okay, that's fine. So said, two years later, Mama said, you're going to have to go down in the basement and talk to that boy. He should be acclimated by now. She said, I went down there ready to just tell the boy he's got to get out. Went down in the basement and told him, said, son, cut the video game off. I want to talk to you a minute. He said, you were in the Army for six years, or the Special Forces for six years. Didn't you learn a skill that can help you find a job? He said, well, I know eight ways I can kill you with a popsicle stick. He said, here, enjoy your video game. Can I get you something to drink or something to eat, you know? And then he said he went upstairs, and his mom said, what did he say? He said, he said don't buy any more popsicles. <laughs> He's on a diet. We don't need any more popsicle sticks in the house. <laughs> God said, I want you to pursue. I don't want you to sit around and wait for something to happen. He said, yeah. Uh, verse, uh, chapter 14, verse 10, David inquired of God, said, shall I go up against the Philistines, and will you give them into my hand? And the Lord said to me, go up, for I will give them into your hand. Many times we pray about things, and God says, okay, and then we pray about it again, and God says, okay, and we pray about it again, and God says, okay, and God said, I'm waiting on you now. You're not waiting on me now. I'm waiting on you. Step out. Pursue it. Go after it. And so David said, if I do go and I do fight this fight, will you give me the victory? A lot of us say, God, will you just give me the victory and call me when it's over? But God said, no, I will use your hand, David, to deliver them into your hand. David had to go after the enemy. And God won the battle through David. God wants to win some battles through you. He wants you to take a stand. I can think of one in particular in uh, maybe like November. Oh, God, oh, God, please give us a God, give us a godly man, give us a godly, oh, God, 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 God. okay, go vote. Pursue it. Find out the truth, not just who has a good TV commercial. How do you know when they're lying? <laughs> they're awake. Not just who Says what you want to hear. Find out the truth. Pursue. Go after. And let God win the victory through you. That's one reason why I never did like going and watching sports. Because I wanted to be on the field. We've got too many spectators. We need some people to get out of the stands and get on the field. Come on now. We need some, we need some Joshua's. Get out in the valley and start swinging the sword and let God use you. To win some victories and win some things for God. Amen? Where the enemy struck, though, was very significant. I want to go back to that. Rephaim. R-E-P-H-A-I-M. In the Hebrew is, is uh, another word. Rapha. Rapha. Let me tell you what it means. That in the Hebrew means to mend, to cure, to heal, to repair, to make whole. Can I tell you what the enemy's doing? 
The enemy's attacking our healing before we get out the door sometimes. God gives us a word. He gives us a healing. He gives us a miracle. And what does the devil do? He attacks that miracle that we got. He attacks. Remember the woman, the Shunammite woman, that the, the prophet told her, said, by this time next year you'll have a baby. And so the prophet was gone. She had the baby. But after about 12 or 14 years, the, the boy had a sunstroke and died. And, and she went back and got the prophet and said, look, God didn't give me this to take it away. You need to come back to my house. And he goes back up there and raises the boy from the dead. Can I tell you something? There's some of us have had some miracles. The enemy's attacking our healing and attacking our miracle. He's attacking the job we got. He's attacking the blessing we got he's trying to go and take back what god gave to us devil you didn't give it to me you can't take it away the cure when he was the place where they're made whole the enemy's attacking our family attacking our children attacking so many things in our life where we're made whole that god has repaired and fixed and i say devil you've got to leave that alone i didn't do that god did that you i didn't make it happen god made it happen He's attacking those things in our life. The enemy goes after our health and our healing. He will fight against the thing years after we've received it. I've had people say, well, I know God healed me, but years later I got this report. The devil is a liar. He's going to try to go back and attack those things that God's done in your life. You tell him he can't have it. Go after your miracle and don't be passive. James 2 and 17 even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself. But someone may say, well, you have faith and, and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I'll show you my faith by my works. How can you show anybody anything if you're just sitting there? I have faith. Okay. If you really have faith, you're going to say, he whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Free in the way they act. In the deeds they do. They're not just sitting like a lump on a, a, a knot on a log, a wart on a frog. They're acting free. And so what, what we have to do is we ha if we really believe something, we begin to act differently. That shows faith. We begin to talk differently. That shows faith. So he said, you say you have faith without works. I'll show you my faith by what I do and how I act. Amen. David said, God has broke through my enemies, broken through my enemies by my hand. Like the breakthrough, it's like, he said, it's like a dam that bur or a water that bursts through the dam and begins to flood everything. He said, That's what God wants to do. He just wants to come like a mighty water flooding in and doing the work. And he does it by, he did it by David's hand. He wants to do it by your hand. He wants to use you to bring about a breakthrough. Somebody say, my breakthrough. Okay, that was okay, but somebody say, my breakthrough. I'm talking about my breakthrough. I'm talking about what God's about to do in my life. I'm talking about the breakthrough that's about to come up in my life. God's going to use my hand to do it. Now, no doubt it was God that did it, but he's going to do it through me if I let him. Amen? Number three, the place of the breakthrough. 1 Corinthians 14, 11. So they came to Baal Perizim. And David defeated them there, and David said, God has broke through my enemies by my hand, like the breakthrough of waters. Therefore, they named that place Bel Perizim. If we'll go, through, go pursue and go after our breakthrough, it's waiting for us at the place of the breakthrough. It's waiting. Your, your breakthrough is waiting for you at the place of the breakthrough. You remember I told the story about buying the knives and 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 when uh, tim was small i bought hand knives and now when you get old enough to not hurt yourself or hurt anybody else this is yours it's yours but i'm keeping it till you get to a place mature wise and age wise that you can not hurt yourself or hurt anybody else with it this tool can be and so and one day i'll, I'll give it to him i might give it to cruz but, no, seriously, so I, he got old enough that I felt like it was. And can I tell you something? God's got your breakthrough, but he's waiting for you to mature to the place of the breakthrough. He's waiting for you to be willing to follow to the place of the breakthrough. He's already, he's already what's, whatever's done on earth shall be done in heaven. Remember, whatever you bind on earth 
has been bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth has been loose in heaven. Everything God is ever going to do, He's already done. Everything God's ever going to do, He's already done. Every person God's ever going to heal, when Jesus went to the cross, they were healed. He said, he who distinguishes the end or knows the end from the beginning, before he ever started your life, he knew everything he was going to do in your life. It's already done. He's waiting on us to get to the place. It's like Christmas. Those gifts are under the tree, wrapped and waiting for you, but you can't have them till December 25th. And God has already wrapped your miracle for you, and it's waiting for you, but he's waiting for you to get to the place of the breakthrough. Well, I tried and it didn't work. I tried and it didn't work. You weren't at the place of the breakthrough. You know what? For Naaman the leper, the place of the breakthrough was the seventh time in the water. But he went six times and nothing happened. That's because that was not the place of the breakthrough. It was the seventh time, like God said, that he got to the place of the breakthrough. The children of Israel, six days was not the place of the breakthrough. The seventh day, six times around was not the place of the breakthrough. But on the seventh day, their seventh time around Jericho, they got to the place of the breakthrough, and the Bible said the walls fell flat. And they had break. Can you see what I'm saying? So just because something failed in the past doesn't mean it's not meant to be. It means you've got to obey God to the place of the breakthrough. To obey is better than sacrifice. Look at someone tell them, I'm going to the place of breakthrough. I'm, I got to go get my breakthrough. I, I'm tired of hitting this wall. I'm tired of beating my head against this wall. I'm tired of trying to climb this wall or go around this wall. I'm ready to get to the place of the breakthrough. There was another situation similar to this one in 1 Samuel 30 and 8. David inquired, the Lord said, Shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to him, Pursue, for you will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. This time, he'd been out fighting Philistines with his men. When they got back home, the, the Philistines had come in and taken all their children and all their wives and everything they owned and taken it away. And the Bible said when they got there, the men saw what had happened and they were considering stoning David. Well, look what the devil did to me. Let's kill the preacher. That happens in more churches than you know. Or maybe you do know. Things, the enemy will do things in our life, things will happen in our life, and we'll turn on the people we care about. People trying to help us, and we'll turn on them. So they were going to, they, they said, okay, we'll just stone David. He's the one that had us out there fighting the Philistines. And the Bible said David encouraged himself in the Lord. He strengthened himself in the Lord. And then he prays this prayer, Lord, should we go after the Philistines? And God said, go, go. See, he learned his lesson. I'm not going until you say Go. So he said, Lord, shall I go after them? And he said, yeah, you go after them. You will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. And he did. But he had to follow them to the place of the breakthrough. And he took back everything the enemy stole from him. Are you with me still? It may not happen until you get to that place of breakthrough. I wish it could happen sooner. I wish it could happen closer to home. I wish it could, happen. I wish it could get a home run on first base. But you got to go around all the bases. I wish you could score just getting the first base because that's all I can hit, Philip. I'm a base hitter. I just if I can get to first base, I'm like I, Hank Aaron and Babe Ruth ain't got nothing on me. I got to first base because I see these boys trying to hit it out of the park, hitting these pop flies and. They catch it. And I know I can't get it over that fence, so I just want to get to first base. But you don't score just getting to first base. you got to go all the way around the base. Can I tell you something? Breakthrough is waiting for you to be, or, or be de dedicated and determined enough to go all the way home with it. That's the place of the breakthrough. Don't give up on first, second, or third base and, and just hope that the next batter is not <laughs> going to get you out. That's got nothing to do with this. But anyway... Remember Daniel's breakthrough. Are you ready? Daniel 10 and 12. Then he said to me, Do not be afraid, Daniel, for from the first day you set your heart on understanding this and on humbling yourself before your God, your words were heard, and I have come in response to your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia was withstanding me for 21 days. 
Then behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left there with the kings of Persia. He said, Daniel, God answered your prayer from the first day you started praying, but the devil was trying to hold it back. But you kept praying, and so after 21 days, you got to the place of breakthrough because Michael came down and said, enough of this, and he helped me overcome the prince of Persia and bring you the answer. The place of breakthrough. God just wants us to be determined to get to the place of breakthrough and not give up when it gets a little challenging. And not back off when it gets a little hard. But we'll get to the place of prayer, to the place of breakthrough. Fast 21 days. Seek God's face. Go after God. Do something different like you've never done. But take yourself to a place of breakthrough. Amen? I, I, believe, I believe September's going to be our breakthrough month. Amen? I'm going to get to the place of breakthrough. I'm going to do whatever I have to do. But I'm ready to get to the place of breakthrough in my life. Go ahead and stand up on your feet tonight. Father, I thank you. There's a place of breakthrough. I thank you. It doesn't matter what battles were lost. don't matter where I blew it or dropped it or did whatever. God, I believe you're waiting for us in the place of breakthrough. Speak to our hearts and tell us. Speak to our hearts and call us. Holy Spirit of God, and let us know. Yes, let us know where it is you want us to go, what it is you're asking of us that we can enter into the place of breakthrough in our life and things really change, things really turn around, things really break loose and come free that we're able to stand in your presence and see your hand at work in our life. God, I pray for a breakthrough for your people tonight. I claim breakthrough tonight in Jesus' name. I claim breakthrough tonight. Let us just call upon you and seek your face to know when to go and to pursue and to break through in Jesus' name. Come on, anybody receive this word tonight? Give him praise in the house. Amen. God bless you. Leave out of here on your way to the place of breakthrough.